Warning, the following communications are not authorized. Please disable your signals and report to your local re-education center immediately. Failure to comply will result in immediate reprimand and capital punishment. So they go in, they bust open their own door from the inside, and the cops, 20 cops, are just waiting there. Probably, it's probably not even that bad. It probably is solely about money. And perhaps a little bit of tinfoil theory we had just off the cuff is that they know that if by some chance Donald Trump does pull this off, that their corruption well is gonna run dry. And I'm just like, can't you admit that you just don't like Trump? And he responds with, can't you admit that you just hate Muslims? <laughs> it's like, Bro. Like not, only, not only is this on your business thing, you're just gonna accuse me of that. Three, two, one. Back again. I feel like there's a song there. Back again. Guess who's back? Shady's back. Okay, <laughs> I got it then. <laughs> Episode three, the trifecta. Um, things are happening everywhere, it seems. Um, item number one that we can jump right into, freedoms being taken. <laughs> number one, small business is being crushed. You mentioned that you wanted me to talk about... Um, this barbecue that I went to. Oh my goodness. Three days we've been trying to get food from this place uh, last week. And the government came and shut that shit down. Let me tell you. So what, <laughs> a- <laughs> so what ended up happening is they told this, he's in this red zone where he's not supposed to be open. This guy day one, he opens line. Wait, okay. the- Indoor, outdoor, nothing, just nothing, not open at all. Nothing. Take- n- not at all. It's, okay. I don't know if it's not big enough, but like grocery stores down the street are allowed to be open. So I don't know what the exact rule is, which is weird. Costco's open and there's other big grocery chain called No Frills, which is a terrible grocery store. Shout out No Frills. But uh, <laughs> it's still open down the street. So day one, they have line up at the door. They have indoor and outdoor dining. Cops come with the bylaw officers. He's like, we're doing six feet apart. I can't stop people from not wearing masks if they say they're exempt and all this stuff. They don't do anything. Day two, he opens. They say they're going to fine him. They give him a summons to court for violating uh, the lockdown order, I guess, uh, which is actually no longer a thing. We are no longer under emor- emergency orders. It's actually a reopen act, which gives the health authorities the power to shut you down under the f- biological warfare. I don't know. <laughs> so the health authorities are allowed to shut you down. So day three, they go. They show up at like 5 or 6 a.m., the cops, that is. They chain up, whether it's a physical chain or just a lock. They seal up his front door, but they allow him entrance to the back part where they, I guess, manufacture smokers or grills or something because that's a fish, not technically part of like the food business. So they go in. They bust open their own door from the inside, and the cops, 20 cops, are just waiting there. A bunch of people pile in front of the door. And they don't let the the cops get in. People are getting shoved out. And eventually what ends up happening is the cops pull this guy away. They arrest him in front of everybody. One guy actually tries to hug the guy and stop him from being arrested. This big fat guy (laughs) who had his own mission. He's part of some other organization that he wants to plug. So he thought he'd do a big publicity stunt. He gets tackled by police. And then once they take him away, they bring in the literal cavalry. Cavalry? Cavalry? Baptist churches, I don't know. Police on horseback come in Uh, uh. to block the one entrance and disperse the crowd. So now you've got 20 cops on one side of the building, 20 cops on the other side in front of horses. The streets are lined with cops. Anyone who's parking on the adjacent streets is getting a ticket. They're blocking off traffic so we can drive in. And the funniest thing about it is this guy doesn't let mainstream media on his property. Any of the major news corporations, they get kicked out. I actually saw guy, somebody took it too far. I don't know if anyone had this on tape, but some photographer for this channel, I won't even name it because probably causes more trouble. I don't know if the guy who took him off the property was deputized by the property owner, but some guy physically tried to remove this guy, which I think is taking it too far. Um, cause you're going to make your own protest look bad. People are yelling at cops in their faces. It kind of reminded me of like a BLM or Antifa protest, frankly, but at the same time, these people are actually fighting for something that's real. 
So that's the difference they didn't burn there. Anything down, I assume, right? They didn't burn. They didn't Correct. Really... Okay. They were just on this guy's property. So that all happened. I interviewed people there. I went live there. It was crazy. Um, once they started playing like Bob Marley and stuff, I had to leave because it was just too much hippiness going on. <laughs> and so the party, the protest party, went on for the rest of the day until they all eventually went home. And they were going to go back and reopen, I guess, the family or friends the next day again. But under the order of the what the health officer, the head health honcho for Toronto, seized the property under this act, seized this man's business, closed it up. They put like the type of fencing you would put around an event, like those little metal barriers. Yeah, yeah. Line. They put that around the property and put trespass notices. So they trespassed this guy from his own property and anyone else that wants to go on there. 24-hour police coverage on the property paid for by the city, off-duty cops, which is a normal thing where they'll pay extra cops, but they're using taxpayer money to pay off-duty cops to watch this restaurant all day and all night for days and days. And so they have the legal authority under this reopen Ontario act that the governing health officer could deem it a health hazard if it stays open and the government can now seize your property, which I think is way too far bringing all these cops in like no, no joke, like 50 cops and all these horses and all these squad cars way too far. Meanwhile, somebody got stabbed in a different part of the city. Obviously there's not as many cops around to go care, take care of that. And later that night, a bunch of people who are the Huron stolen indigenous land people, they protested in downtown Toronto and blocked off an intersection. They didn't have any horses come for them. They didn't have 50 cops show up and, and bust the cap. They didn't actually do that. <laughs> <laughs> but nobody got shot or beat just to be clear. They didn't have the same police presence for people who are actually blocking the most one of the busiest intersections in the entire city, preventing streetcars and people from getting home. It's nuts. It's gone way too far. And what do they say? They say these people are idiots. They, this is the, the premier, the governor of Ontario. These people are idiots. They got to stop because they started going to his house. They started bringing a truck with a bullhorn outside of his house to, to yell at him. They didn't last long, but they've now been proactively doing this to businesses. So this guy has three other businesses that they tried to close or two other ones. I'm pretty sure tried to close. They went and they chained up a gym that was going to open on the other side of town. They closed up a golf simulator that tried to open like a some place some guy runs and with golf is, simulators this is in it in the reopening process right this is not hard strict lockdown this is supposed to be sort of the tail end of this am i right yes but they've placed two put two regions under red zones again and they've placed another a third this week under red zone so that's supposed to be not anything that's not essential is now closed so apparently a restaurant's not essential but like like I said, Costco is. It doesn't make much sense when you're trying to feed people. But other businesses tried to reopen against these uh, lockdown provisions, and they just went and sealed them up and fined them. I, I'm just – I'm at a loss for words. This sounds so extreme. Do you think this guy has – I mean, this – because just watching, uh, I think, you know, your clips or whatever was floating around on Rebel, um, it just seems so extreme, right? Because obviously what's happening in California with Newsom – and Cuomo and all that stuff, it seems extreme, but it hasn't really got to that point yet. Now, all that said, I was arrested some months back at the beginning of this, and I do have a lawsuit, which is actually shaping up sort of in my favor, but that's a completely different story, and we are, are going to be in, in this for the long haul. You know, I might have a couple kids living on a farm somewhere <laughs> by the time this case is all finished. Um, but do you think this guy has like legal recourse i mean I, I don't really know what the system is like up there like i don't i'm not a lawyer here so i don't really know you know the ins and outs oh, of the not? law here does he have does, does he have a case i mean can he can he fight this or is it is this just this is just it for him like take this man's business take everything like obviously they've made it more popular than ever i had never heard of it i know people in new york who are talking about it who never would have yeah. even known who this guy was so do you think, I guess the, my question to you is, do you think he has some sort of legal recourse or is he just, they just cooked him and it's over? 
See, that's the thing. He should. Like a few months ago, I don't believe he would have because the emergency powers thing that they enacted months ago um, is part of like the Constitution Act of Canada. We don't have a strong constitution. We have a Constitution Act, which is like a constitution, but it doesn't. Light. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not quite freedom of speech, not quite <laughs> complete property freedoms. But so under that, the the emergency orders were under were a part of that like you like they go hand in hand so an emergency order can take away some of your rights at some times which i don't agree with personally unless we're in a we're world war scenario i guess or a real like flesh eating virus is on the tear something less than 99 percent, i'll say <laughs> yeah okay Same. but this but this reopen act does not mention the constitution at all. So I don't think, and I'm not a lawyer again, wink, wink, nudge, <laughs> nudge, but I don't think it mentions it. Therefore he should have a case. Now they gave him $50,000 bail. And from what I'm he hearing, he's not allowed to talk about it at all. as part of his bail hearing as if he's going to run or something. This guy who's got his fat, he's got two kids, a girlfriend or a wife. I don't know if they're married and three businesses. And he's just going to what flee. They just want to make an example of him. They're using taxpayer money. So he's raised like over, I could look it up right now, but the last time I checked, he raised over $200,000 for his legal fund. He had lawyer, a couple lawyers waiting there basically for him. Like obviously a bunch of lawyers wanted to take this case. Um, so he's got legal representation, but I don't know what's going to happen. Like if anything breaks the bank against the government trying to do this, it's got to be this. Because like seizing somebody's property, they're going to have to prove, I think, that seizing his property was for the greater good of the health of everybody in an, like an emergency situation. Well, the Costco down the road is still open. Yes, correct. <laughs> I parked in the parking lot of an open grocery store in order to walk down there. It was like, I don't know, 500 feet away. Okay, it's stupid. So it, it's absolute insanity. And I think it proves... That obviously, this is I, it, as much as I can't stand the American Democratic Party. This proves that this is obviously a bigger. I mean, you know, we could talk about Agenda 2030 or Great Resets and all that stuff. Is that clearly people, you know, in, in that in that huge club? What, what was it? Um, who was it? Uh, the old comedian. I forget his name. George Garland. He's like, well, it's a George big club, Carlin, and you ain't yeah. in. Yeah, yeah. So well, clearly, these people have been like cohorting, like cahooting, you know, together, planning things around our backs and, and they're all in on it. And they just obviously, obviously you need to come up with a reason, right? So while in New York right now, I, I watch de Blasio's uh, Instagram stories and he's pumping it full. Like the whole story is flyers for go get a free test. So you got, they got people lined up around the block with no symptoms to get a test. And then they come back and say, cases are surging. We're going to shut down. It's like, how do you not see this? It's starting to become clear to, at least to me, in my opinion, that this is a thing to make money off of. It's not a fake virus. I don't think it's a fake virus. I don't think it's a uh, thing to plot to take over the world. I think is what it's turning out to be is a thing to get big donors a lot of money. Your Costco's, your Amazon's, your Walmart's, your Pfizer, and all these other places. If you're mandating vaccines then that's a shit ton of money for these companies for these for for Pfizer and Moderna is that Moderna, one Johnson yeah. and Johnson now that does make me feel actually a little bit better because I could go <laughs> full like AJ tinfoil hat you know like all over the place and be like oh they're gonna take everything over they're gonna you know turn the frogs gay or whatever is, is happening but I, I think that's a great point and it does kind of make me feel a little bit better that is just well, regular fun. like it's just regular old greed it's not like <laughs> yeah it's not a, a you know it's not a more even more sinister like like we're gonna take over everything and depopulate and bill gates is gonna shoot you up and you know all, all sorts of things it's like okay we just want a little bit more money and it does make sense because i think one a couple things that really kind of flew under the radar and certainly now have been forgotten from a couple months ago was gavin newsom's backdoor mask deal and he did that after cuomo had done something very similar about buying masks for the entire state now i don't have all the details on this but what i'm understanding and this was months ago they did they both did something very similar to where Cuomo 
again, fact check me. I'm sure we'll get s- censored and demonetized or whatever. But Don't worry, we something- have the warning. <laughs> <laughs> something along the lines of he basically budgeted, uh, say, for the sake of argument, budgeted um, $5 per mass, which is an astronomical price, but they only cost him $1 per mass. So the rest of that money went somewhere. Now, again, you would have to do a whole bunch of digging. Um, I, one of these reporters that actually found my Instagram feed when I was looking at the, the old testing facility was like, I'm working on this case against Cuomo, and I would love to use some of your testing facility footage. And it's a long, long story, but basically it does make sense that, okay, this is really just about big money, right? Like to, I guess, transition fairly nicely into my theory with Gavin Newsom out in California is like, and I even had to tell my, my parents this because they're in the Bay Area, right? They're under the thumb of Gavin Newsom right now. And they're just kind of like, well, you know, you know, I know it's not very good, but we, you know, we really do have to follow the rules. And I'm like, mom, this is a picture of the man who told you to wear a mask between bites, dining out at the French Laundry, which is probably one of the most expensive restaurants in the entire country with a dozen other people for his good friend's 50th birthday. And of course, some... Um, some health industry executives. He's out there eating with them while he's telling you, wear a mask between bites. Don't celebrate Thanksgiving. And we can see it. Like, h- how long does this have to go on? And you're still going to say, and this is to my, my family, like, before you say, maybe we should think twice about this. Maybe we're not going to blindly obey everything that these weirdos put into place. Because now Gavin Newsom, now for months we've been told, oh, outdoor dining, outdoor dining, outdoor dining. In New York, they turned the outside inside right so you start seeing these little sheds and 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 shacks and huts pop up with heaters and tables and and things that we used to call windows in them right like they cut (laughs) these little holes on the side of them and say that's outdoors right because outdoors was good indoors was bad you were going to die if you go indoors now gavin newsom is saying that you can't eat indoors or outdoors why would he do that why would he do that i have no idea and now, and this just happened today. So after the, the ban on dining, so you could take out, right? So you could go up to a restaurant and say, okay, I want, you know, two burgers and you could take it back home and that would be safe. But if you sat on the patio of that restaurant, you're going to kill someone. <laughs> How is this possible? And now he's doubling down saying, well, and this is from the San Francisco Chronicle. I don't have it pulled up. And I will admit I was a little bit of a headline warrior on this, but we could look into it. He's, he's saying that, Oh, well, as cases surge, we're going to go into another lockdown. And like you mentioned, they're, they're reading from the same playbook because Gavin Newsom's talking about where they're in the purple tier. What? You, you just made it up. It reminds me, if you, all, if you ever watch It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, there's a little, a little scene where he's like, orange is more, it's way more threatening than yellow. And, and, and Mac's <laughs> like, yellow's way more threatening. And then it's like, red, no, red, orange. And it's like, what's so... Cuomo's out in New York screaming at a reporter saying, I told you we were in an orange zone. And then Cuomo, uh, and then Newsom is out in California saying, this is the purple tier. And then you got your guys up in Toronto or whatever saying, well, he's in a red zone. It's like, you guys just made up all these rules only to make up rule, new rules to fix the old rules that you just made. So they shut everything down and then say, okay, well now it's in a red zone. And they say, well, these are the red zone rules and this is the reopening plan to reopen the stuff that I just closed down when you could just back off. But of course they won't. And that's why I was going so sinister. Like these people just want complete control. And, but it's probably, it's probably not even that bad. It's probably is solely about money. And perhaps a little bit of tinfoil theory hat just off the cuff is that they know that if by some chance Donald Trump does pull this off, that their corruption well is going to run dry. <laughs> my that camera's my screwing point. up to keep talking. No, my I mean, camera. that's pretty much it. I can't stand these people, man. You know, got a little technical difficulties, but it's just, it's insane. And now we know, obviously, that Cuomo has lost the Supreme Court case, which is great. Um, now, of course, he will tell you that the Supreme Court is irrelevant. Imagine that. The governor of New York State, whose little brother is on television five nights out of the week, says that the Supreme Court is irrelevant. And a little aside on that is, 
I think we both know that if one of Donald Trump's brothers or Donald Trump's son had a mainstream TV show that was on television five nights out of the week, we would not hear the end of it. But the With nepotism, giant the weird, huh? With giant Q-tips. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so if imagine, imagine if if Don Jr. was on. It doesn't even have to be Fox News. Imagine if Don Jr. somehow locked down the show at Newsmax. We wouldn't hear the end of it. But nobody wants to talk about the fact that you've got little Fredo out batting for his corrupt older brother every night of the week, and nobody cares. And then Anna Andrew, King Emperor Andy Cuomo, has the nerve to call the Supreme Court ruling against him irrelevant. What? How, how do we even <laughs> I, I, I'm at a loss for words, as you can tell. It's absolutely disgusting. And as soon as you, as soon as you question any of it, like what's happening, I mean, just it never ends in New York. There, uh, they're testing kids without the parents' uh, approval, and they they want well, to vaccinate. Good. Yeah. <laughs> and as soon as you question it, if you just say, "Well, um, maybe so," uh, you know, the the virus has a 99.9 percent survival rate. But the vaccine that you rush through to save us is only 95% effective. Why should I do this? And then they say, you're a conspiracy theorist. What I'm hearing now is that, well, something that I've heard previously about um, the elderly is that they're going to need multiple vaccinations. It's going to come in stages. But something I'm hearing now is that they're, this is definitely not uh, confirmed is that you're going to need it yearly. Now that would be, I would hope that would wake some people up if, if that ends up happening. Now I see it being mandatory for kids. It's just going to go by the teachers unions. They're going to want the money. They'll probably get paid a little bit from the vaccine maker or the government or something. And it'll be down to like the school board or the teachers unions. Cause it, it, the way I look at it, all the people who usually are used to getting government money are the ones that are still open like these big box chains and like teachers unions, they up here, they got money. They got all this money for protective, protective equipment and stuff, even though kids don't get hurt, sick from it and disputed claim, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and the nurses union got money, even though they had to fire people because the hospitals were empty. So they got money to hire them back so that they could sit there and do nothing. Any twerk, Hospital- did you see any twerkers, any, any TikTok yeah. nurses? That seems more of a UK thing because they're so far gone into patheticness of all their public sectors. But um, I think for sure it's going to be mandatory for schools, even though it's completely unnecessary. The teachers are going to be like, oh, but the teachers, they predicted that so many people, and I know somebody personally who predicted that the kids are going to give it to the teachers and the kids are going to go spread it around and they're going to go home and they're going to get babysat by their grandparents and their grandparents are going to die. None of that happened. Still only one kid in the entire country under 20 has died from in Canada. There's no outbreak amongst teachers. None of that actually happened. And what they were calling for was the same thing they were calling for months ago before all this, which was smaller classrooms, which equals more teachers, obviously. And it just so happens that their wishes during COVID were the exact same as their wishes (laughs) in their (laughs) battle with the government. So I think it's going to be mandatory for if you want to send your kid to school, I think it's going to be some companies are going to try to make it mandatory. And then we are past this human rights fiasco of do we have to wear a mask or not? And we're to the point of are companies allowed legally to require a vaccine? Are airplanes going to require vaccines? Is a new airplane company going to pop up that doesn't make you get a vaccine? That's the only way around it if they do allow it. So I don't know. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy that we're at this point. So, okay. Uh, I know, I mean, no, I can't say I know. I, I don't have kids, but in my time in New York, just listening to some of the teachers union, like representatives, like the union boss, it was a complete race to the corruption bottom. So you got Bill de Blasio, who's a complete corrupt politician and the teachers union head, who's who I had never heard of, but he's corrupt too. It's odd. I mean, to your point, it's just, they want more money. Uh, de Blasio doesn't have it. De Blasio wants money from the feds. Where did it all go, bro? Like, where did it all go? It went to your wife and all sorts of things. And it's so sad to see the corrupt 
politicians and these corrupt union bosses using children as pawn as pawns. Um, it's absolutely disgusting. And to your point about like companies and flights. So today, even while I was at work, I saw a guy, um, a, not to be rude or anything, but he kind of looked like Santa Claus, just like a big old fat, like old guy, <laughs> easily 70 years old, you know, um, but he was How is that insulting to look like Santa. Yeah. <laughs> um, he, he he was he was wearing his mask when he came into the office. Um, you know, full disclosure, you know, out here you do see people wearing them, but it's not it is not prevalent. It's basically a complete 180 from what you see in New York where I might be one out of the only person out of 10 who's not wearing one. It's the opposite way here, so like you might see one, maybe two people wearing it if you if you see a group of 10. But so he comes in, he's all jolly and happy. And, you know, he's an older guy, kind of get the, the feeling that maybe he doesn't have much to talk, uh, many people to talk to. So he's hanging out in our office for, you know, oh, nearly an hour. And he said that he actually had the Rona, which I just thought was funny because, I mean, if it's coming for anybody, it's coming for him. This guy's easily 70 years old, very overweight. Um, and seemed to fit the bill of everything that they told you was would kill you. And he's like, you know, I, 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 I felt sick for three or four days, and, you know, I just don't want to feel that bad again, so I wear this mask. But, you know, 20 minutes into him being in the office, he took it off, so it's not like I, – I guess the point I'm trying to make is that, to me, proves the point that it's just not that bad, right? Like, this guy was supposed to be the guy that was going to be wiped off the face of the earth because of this thing, and he told the story about how he felt sick for three days. <laughs> when all said and done i can't imagine like freaking out the people in their cars with their masks on something that's 99 and a half percent not gonna kill you i just don't understand it i uh, you'll you, you have higher chances of dying from a lot of things i just read something in japan they've had more suicides than coronavirus deaths in the last couple yep. months <laughs> which makes sense and and Japan's now, got a lot of suicide anyways, to be fair. And now they're, they got, I mean, they're, they're torturing. I don't know what's going on in Japan, but if it's anything like what's happening here, they're torturing people. I don't know about the businesses, but meanwhile, they're having, uh, you know, it was already months ago that we saw that viral clip. Now, I, I don't know. I didn't fact check it myself, that viral clip of that big pool party music festival happening in Wuhan, China. Now, for all I know, maybe that wasn't Wuhan. Maybe that was pre-virus. I, like I said, I didn't fact check the, the photos or the clip myself. But how is that happening? So they seem to be all back to normal after literally locking people, like physically locking people in their own homes. They got it all under control. Nobody's ever going to die again. And now they're having music festivals. And and we're, how how is it happening like that? Well, do you expect China to care if like 200,000 people die? I don't, I don't expect them to care if that amount of their population, they have slave labor. I don't, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and uh, Nike wants to make sure dispute is <laughs> claim is disputed about constant Uyghur concentration camps. And um, one of my one of my other friends from New York says that um, that she now she didn't say that it was mandatory, but she told me that uh, she got a, a notice, an email or whatever from her job saying that, and this is just what she told me is that vaccines will be uh, vaccine day is December 12th or something like that. So they didn't say it was mandatory, but they basically set it up on the T that, th- that her job is going to be vaccinating people in two weeks, bro. Like what? somebody like, claim, somebody claimed something like that to me that they're going to make that my mom said, and she works for Costco that they're going to make them all get vaccines mandatory. I am just like, send me, Send me the email or wherever they got. You always got to ask for the email or a picture of the document because everybody says something. And then he's like, oh, well, I, uh, sorry to the guy if I'm outing, <laughs> if I'm ripping on him here. But uh, not really. Um, he's just like, oh, she'll send you a voice message. I'm like, that's not good enough. I can't, I'm not making a video based on somebody's voice message. Somebody else said, um, my husband has access to this. And I was like, send me a screenshot. They don't have of, the, of this database and she sent me a screenshot of her telling me that her husband has it i was like i don't need a screenshot of her own <laughs> conversation <laughs> well i guess that makes me feel pretty good that because run with this story on this screenshot <laughs> risk your reputation i can't because i obviously can't prove it but um 
you know, it, it's, it does seem to, this is, I guess, good news because A, if it's not true, we're all freaking out or some of us are freaking out, not because of the virus, but because of the, the control factor and the vaccines and all this nonsense based on a virus that's not really that deadly. I mean, you, obviously, you know how, to, how they switched the goalposts, right? It was deaths and hospitalizations and, oh, the hospitals are going to be overrun and there's going to be freezer trucks everywhere. And then now what do they talk about? cases. All they talk about is cases. So between talking about how there's a spike in cases and an uptick and a surge, like Fauci, the snake himself says, a surge upon a surge. And what does that they mean? Just talk about, it means put your mask on, shut up and obey. That's what it means. But Two more years. They shifted, because I remember, I remember even the Surgeon General and, and, and uh, Burks and Fauci yeah. saying, well, it's going to be in two weeks. We're going to see the spike in two weeks. Now, I guess that was the first wave, and this is now the second wave. But it's just so bizarre that we're literally replaying the same script. They told us way back in April that the peak is going to come in two weeks, and everybody's going to die off if you even think about going to work. Now, I was skeptical at the beginning, but as I watched it slowly play out at that empty testing facility and these, these uh, hospital workers – you know, at, at downtown Sinai, Union Square, going to get chicken wings and pizza and then going back into the hospital. Now, I get it. You all got to take a lunch. But, I mean, if you in there fighting a deadly virus, do you really just walk out to go get some hot wings? Like, <laughs> I, I, and you get pizza delivered. Like, are you worried about him? Are you guys going to pass? Like, Oh, it's eat? so inconsistent. Okay. It's so inconsistent. It's absolutely infuriating. And now, of course, Gavin Newsom is playing the card the hardest. So, Cuomo and Newsom did their little red zone, blue zone thing, and then they did the curfew. Oh, you can't leave after 10 p.m. And now Newsom is like, oh, hold my beer, Cuomo. I'm going to lock down again just to make sure that California earns the title that, that some of my friends call it, obviously, California. Um, uh, my buddy, my buddy uh, uh, James, are you familiar with James Clue? He's a, he's. Uh, he might have you beat for best hair on YouTube, but he was. Um, James K L U G. Yes. Okay. Y- yeah. Shout out James. You know, um, that's that's a you know we did. I worked his head's like top. shaved almost. No, it's not <laughs> shaved, but it's very short. I know he wears a he wears a hat most of the time. I guess I'm wearing a hat too because I need to get a haircut. I haven't found a South Dakota barber yet. His haircut is alt right. <laughs> um. Yeah, he went, speaking of all right, he went viral a long time ago because he has the we, a we the people tattoo and like a leftist saw it and was like, thought it was like, look, it's a swastika. It's like, dude, it's, <laughs> it's definitely not a swastika. Like these people are delusional. But um, I'm just looking he, at these uh, case counts here. They, they've projected um, 66 or 60,000 cases a day in Canada before the end of the year. We're currently at 2,200. But okay. As a, so as a huge running, spike. <laughs> but are they running are they running ads and propaganda about how much you how how important it is to go get a test? Because that's all you see in New York. It's not as bad here, but they're running no, they're go not. Get a test, go get a test. They're not No, they're not because um, right now the federal government is getting like shit on because they don't have a plan and they can't tell us when the, we're getting the test. Because originally it's we're gonna we're gonna be the first ones to get the test here when or the, the vaccine here when we're ready so wait did you say tests or get vaccinated the tests because no, they're because they, the, right they want they want to make sure that they say cases are spiking but in order to get yeah. more cases to spike they need more people to get tested and we don't we already know that some of those tests might be faulty you hear, hear, hear about uh erica badu who said she got a test yeah. and the right nostril was positive and left was negative or whatever and then there was um Elon was Musk it, as well. Yeah, Elon Musk. Yeah, who, uh, you know, I I have a love hate relationship with Elon, so I mean, that's a that's another story. But yeah, what did he? He got two positive and two negative. So we already know that they're faulty, but they need people to sign up and go stand in line to get a test, so they can tell you that the cases are spiking no matter what. What they what ended up happening here, at least where I live in Ontario, which is still ten million people. Um, they had too many people come in to get tested as precautions. So they had to tell them to stop. One example they kept giving was that a hockey team all came to get tested out of precaution. And they're like, we don't have time for this. So they made it by appointment only. 
And then they, they're going to try to use the, uh, the quick tests that are like a couple hours or less. They're going to try to pump those out, but they're not telling people to go get tested. They say they're testing 30,000 people a day in my province. I don't know where they get these people from. Um, they must be retesting the same people and over, over again. Cause there's no huge lineups outside of anywhere where there's testing. I don't know anyone who goes and gets tested. Uh, and as far as what I was mentioning about the vaccine is they kept saying that they were going to be first in line to get the vaccine probably after the United States. Turns out we're not going to get it until the U S Germany, like five other countries. And then it turns out that they don't even have a plan. They can't tell us when we'd get a vaccine. They can't tell us which one we're getting. And they keep getting doses shit. We need? Yeah, they keep getting shit on for that. So it's pretty funny. But I think right now, right today, I saw someone say that they're making a deal with Pfizer in my province, which it tr- contributes to my, of course, they're going to make a ton of money off of this. Especially if, you, especially if you know how many kids there's going to be getting it because you know how many kids are in your school system in the province and teachers and healthcare workers. So you probably got like a mandatory million people. So can we just, can, okay, I'm not doing it. Like I'm not getting it, right? So I'll be sitting here on my South Dakota porch with my home protection, just waiting for a, a vaccine administrator to pull up on me. I'm not going to do it, <laughs> but let's just, can we just get this over? Like how long is this going to drag out? We, it, this started back in February and they said, oh, the peak is going to come in two weeks. And then. They were already obviously already planning for a second wave in, in, you know, April. And if you recall, the mask stuff, the, the mandatory, the, the masking, that didn't even come in until easily six weeks in. Oh, I mean, it didn't it come in here until like August. Yeah, ex- exactly. And then they just went full blown like, what? You're not wearing them. Like, how dare you? Like, you, then you have guys like Andrew Cuomo the nursing home killer himself saying, looking at a television camera and saying, if you don't wear a mask, you could literally kill someone. You could literally kill someone. It's like, dude, give that man an Emmy. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 It's absolutely mind blowing. Um, but I think, and I've said this from the beginning that I think it was, um, n- now you've brought to light, of course, just a money grab, right? A, a money play, whatever could be power. At the beginning, I just thought this this is what they want to do so that they could tarnish the American economy because that's what Donald Trump was so good at, and it was all political. So you could get rid of the economy that he built and blame the virus on him all at one time and then say, on top of that, so it's kind of like a three-pronged approach. So kill, uh, kill the economy because Donald Trump built it, blame him for doing it, and get mail-in voting, which obviously... Well, yeah, the whole thing we're dealing with. Now. It works for everybody, you know. It, it, some it works everybody's good. The Trump probably went to the drug company. and was like, "Listen, you'll be heroes, and you'll get a lot of money if you do this really fast." And everybody has a part, like a way to make a bunch of money off of this. Unfortunately, that's what and, it turns you know, out to be. Except for small business owners, except for the regular person, everybody who's part of a union or a giant multinational corporation. This has been a gold mine. Well, I'm going to sell a book just like Andrew Cuomo. So hopefully that works for me. Yeah, you were um, saying. <laughs> I didn't know what a photo book meant at first. I thought it was like an app. So you're, what are they, are they printing it per purchase? Did you get a deal? Are you p- publishing this yourself? What is it? Yeah, that so it'll be, it'll be printed, uh, you know. It's a coffee at, table book on coffee tables. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Right. So. Um, is place it's called Gatekeeper Press. They've been super responsive. Um, you know, we had just a couple like phone uh, consultations, a couple meetings. I explained it to them, um, and now I'm basically just sifting through thousands of photos, trying to get it down to uh, about two between 200 and 300 pages of just like just one per page, just every single one um, about. Yeah, the, the demise of the whole thing and, and just how, how disgusting it is. Um, and, and to be honest with you, I didn't even realize how many photos I was actually taking. Now, of course, if you count like, if I see something that just just my favorite heap of trash and I just have to get it from every single angle, I would still count that as one, right? But just going through my little iCloud here, I didn't even realize that I got up to like, you know, 8,000 photos of New York yeah. decay. Um, 
I have to narrow it down to That's 200. That's the title. So, right? I got it. I was New I, York, I, comma decay. It, it, that's that's in the running, and then I thought very simply, um, New York City in 2020, and just like very simply put, um, and of course they they're gonna have a long road to recovery, as you know. I drove halfway across the country to get out of that stuff, so just a shameless plug there. Um, it, no, it's about I need two five copies. Yeah. I need one copy <laughs> for shilling, and one copy for myself. Got you. I got you. So as soon as I finish. Um, so I should be done like sifting. Uh, also, another fun fact: I did print one for myself, so I should have that just to kind of show off pretty soon. Um, but once I finalize all that stuff, there might actually be a sequel because, like I said, I didn't realize how many photos there actually were. Um, it, it's looking like about a five to six week turnaround. So um, we'll, we'll call it spring. We'll hopefully be be really uh, cooking with gas as far as that's concerned. Um, Is it going to be black and white or all color? All color. All color. Uh, it's going Because I, I mean, can see the argument for black and white. And and I did think about that. As I'm going through this little... There's this little uploader app so it can kind of get a preview um, of what it, what it will look like. And, and I did click black and white on some. And I might, I might, it might just depend on the photo. You never know. That's, there's a lot of forks in the road. Um, but that's just kind of a project that I've, I've been thinking about for a long time. And now that I, now that I, dude, there was a point I, I said in one of my little Instagram clips where it was getting so bad, the garbage, that if I wanted to take a picture of every single heap of garbage, and I'm not talking about someone who dropped the soda on the ground. I'm talking about huge vibrating rat filled heaps of garbage. If I stopped to take a photo of every single one, I would literally never get to where I'm going. So I have to skip some of them. But <laughs> That's now terrible. That, oh, it's awful. And you, you and even the, the book is not going to do it justice. Like when you, when you're walking through this, you're dodging the, you're dodging the bums, you're dodging the poop, you're dodging the, you know, I don't know, maybe human, maybe dog, whatever it is. You're dodging all that. Meanwhile, your rent is through the roof. I think I mentioned that one of my last days in New York City, there was a bum sleeping in the lobby of my building. <laughs> and an astronomical amount of rent for And I asked him, I was super nice. I was like, dude, what are you, what are you doing here, man? He's like, ah, literally sprawled out on the floor. Like, oh, I'm waiting for my cousin. <laughs> on like, the floor. I'm yeah, on the floor, inside of the building. And I had heard about him. My no neighbor, one, of, one of my neighbors told me about him. She was like, you ever see that guy in here? that guy, that bum that gets in here. And I was like, lady, you're acting crazy. I don't know what you're talking about, but I hadn't, I hadn't seen it with my own two eyes. Um, but on my second to last day in New York city, I saw him and I was like, this is the sign. Like, I'm, I'm so glad I made the right decision. And that's not to say I might not go back or I might not go to another, you know, big city, but for now I got to take a break from those places, especially if, you know, Beijing Biden makes it happen and turns every, turns everything turns the entire country into California and New York, at least this little section right smack dab in the middle of the country will be, it, it'll take the longest to get here. So as the, as the cliff sort of erodes away in New York and California and maybe even Florida or whatever's going on, and maybe even Texas, you know, these Democrats are strategically placing, you know, blue haired uh, far left weirdos in these States to try to turn them. But my point is sleeper right, agents. <laughs> Exactly. Here in South Dakota, it'll take the longest to get here, even with Beijing Biden, Biden at the helm. And uh, I'm sure you heard it. This is this is no place to joke around like there's a gun under every bl blade of grass. So I don't think they want to try it. And um, I guess to that point, just as far as talking about Joe Biden, this man broke his foot playing with his dog. How is this well, happening? One, I don't believe it. I believe okay, he probably right. did something else. But I like to imagine that he got crossed over. <laughs> and his ankle just shattered. That's what I want to imagine. And who was it? It was actually Kyle Kashuv. I don't know how you say his last name. Kashuv. He point yeah. he, the day the day that happened. He's like CNN's going to write an article that says like this is him playing with his dog is going to show how like well mannered and loving and stuff he is. And CNN the very next day printed a thing like this is Biden getting hurt while playing with his dog sets a new tone for the presidency. It's like they're yeah. taking him breaking his ankle and saying how great it is. And that's how the New York Times is going to, you know, 
cr- be as critical as the last presidency is the next. Yeah. And like, hey, remember CNN, Donald, Trump but still. A, Donald Trump doesn't have a dog. He hates dog. If Donald Trump saw your dog, he would kick your puppy in the face. You know, like he's lived in apartment buildings his whole life. I, I wouldn't imagine he'd have a dog, but. I mean, look, I, I like dogs. Like, I will pet every dog at the park, but do do I need The president that doesn't take – yeah, the president <laughs> doesn't take care of the dog. He sees yeah, it once so, every three weeks. So does that – I mean, obviously, you know, I, I'm not really buying it. Just like I'm not buying that he got 80 million votes. I mean, they're so full of fraud and corruption. It's absolutely uh, – it's nearly impossible to believe almost anything that the Democratic Party puts out now, but – I mean, is this full tinfoil hat stuff? Like, is this, you know, undercover uh, Kamala, you know, Hillary's control? Like, what's really happening with this? Like, they, they, he did, the media is still claiming that he's president-elect when he's act, act as of today, whatever, November 30th, he is still not the president-elect. The media, at every chance they get, will say he's the president-elect. And before he even gets certified... He breaks an ankle, breaks an ankle, and says that he's going to have to wear a boot for the next few weeks. Um, you know, four to six weeks, he's going to be on a boot. I mean, what is he? He's 78, 77, 78? I don't see. Like, it, it could e- they could get him to wear a boot. That's pretty easy. But, like, thinking of what ended up being the reality of what was wrong with Hillary when they said there was nothing wrong with her, it was that she got a severe concussion and was having seizures from her concussions like months and months later because she's an old lady like that's not her fault obviously but they just pretended that nothing happened and it took her to she looked like she got (laughs) it's gonna sound so terrible but i think it's funny she looked like she got (laughs) rocked by a chair in like late 90s wrestling (laughs) 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 hold her up (laughs) before they could admit that something was wrong she was wearing anti-seizure sunglasses people had to point this all out and infowars everybody was the one who broke those stories. Remember how hot InfoWars was in 2016? They were just on a roll with everything. Oh, man. Like, it was a good time. Like, when Alex Jones and PJW were, like, mainstream news, like, every week, and until they eventually had to kick them off of everything. That was... People were riding high. But Where's Jack was... InfoWars sticker around here somewhere. But, yeah, shout uh, out to them. It's, it's like everything they say comes true in six months. <laughs> I uh, interviewed a guy in the InfoWars shirt last week, and he's like, people used to say I was crazy. Now they're calling me and saying I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 okay, all right. I'm but, sure um, that. yeah, that probably is not happening. He had a sweet <laughs> handlebar mustache, and he's holding <laughs> cannolis. So there's that. I mean, Speaking I'm sure of New I'm... York, though, I was watching a movie. Ever seen a movie called King of New York? I, 1990. I that, is that Christopher Walken? Yeah. <laughs> I, I haven't. You should watch it. it. Is that the one where is, is that uh, where like the famous clip where he's like, "No blackjack, no dope deals, not a nickel bag gets sold in the park." Is that is that the one? Yeah, I didn't. Yeah. I had never seen it before. The only reference I, I guess, I knew from it was Biggie Smalls always used to refer to himself as Frank White, and that's the name of the na- main character. So it's Christopher Walken, Wesley Snipes, and Lawrence Fishburne, who oh. used to go who used to go by Larry Fishburne. Back in the I like day, Larry in the, in the credits. I like Larry and better. he was a cool drug dealer in 1990. <laughs> but it's a good movie, a lot of senseless murder. I was surprised Christopher Walken isn't annoying at all. He's still kind of weird in it, but it's still good. He's basically a drug kingpin who gets out of jail, and uh, they want to take over the drug game while still helping out the community. Okay. And murder ensues. It sounds like New Jack City. If you're, I think Wesley Snipes is in that as well. Wait, I've no, seen. You said, he said. Wait, who did you say? Uh, Wesley Snipes, Lawrence yeah. Fishburne, and Christopher Walken. I'm yeah, pretty yeah. sure I've seen New Jack City, but there's so many good... There's a young Chris Rock, a very young Chris Rock in New Jack City. Very young. Let me ask you if you know what this other movie is. There is a movie, which I'm pretty sure is based in New York. It's about two brothers, and they're obviously into drug dealing and everything, because it's a movie. <laughs> and one of them gets kidnapped... And they torture him, Buddy's friend, to try to get him to find out where the other guy lives. And I just remember this guy being like, he's in a chair, he's tied up, and they're just saying, where does Andre live? And he's like, being like, the Chinese dub, screw you, man. (laughs) uh, (laughs) No, it wasn't, but I just don't think we should, I should, 
I don't. I try not to say the fucks too much, you know, uh, oh. on the screens. Yeah, In real yeah, life, I, I don't care. <laughs> but anyways, and they usually like, give him the drill, man. And they hit this guy with a power drill in the back. <laughs> and it's a pretty sweet scene. And the other scene I'll never forget is they get Buddy coming home from playing basketball. And one guy puts him up in a full Nelson while the other <coughs> guy stabs him like 20 times. It was so gruesome. I saw it on BT when I was like 14. I like oh. 1 a.m. Uh, I don't know what movie that, like, I, I want to say Carlito's Way, but that's probably no, not. No, it was a very, it, like, black movie. Uh, like, it was on BET at, like, one in the morning, and I've never, yeah. it was something, like, Do you, obviously you remember not BET Uncut? <laughs> the tip drill by Nelly? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the oh, only, that's the only video yeah. I remember being played on that. <laughs> It was something like obviously it's not Pride and Prejudice, but it was something like that name, like uh, like something and something, because it's like this is what it's really like, you guys. And it was so gruesome that people are getting power drilled in the back and vice grips to his balls as well. Oh no, no, I'm not familiar with that one, but uh, maybe I will we'll try to find that in the editing room. <laughs> <laughs> Good, Jamie, can you pull that up? <laughs> um, oh, try can. to check out uh, King of New York. And uh, maybe revisit New Jack City. I've also uh, kind of been wanting to rewatch The Wire for some weird reason, but that's that's a whole other topic, you know. Maybe it maybe is. we'll I, maybe we'll come up with some segments. We'll do maybe delve a little bit more into pop culture or something. Talk music. I see you got the the Juice World. I got my Treasure Island Music nice. Festival um, from back when yeah. we used to go to music festivals and 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 dance with people and, and drink beer on the lawn. Can't do that. It's now. Not allowed. Yeah. I actually started doing movie reviews on my channel before COVID and those theaters not allowed anymore because I get, I won't say which place I still get um, <laughs> uh, invites to the screenings for because I used to write movie reviews, but I still get to go to screenings for one movie studio, which is pretty sweet. Uh, you can probably figure out, I guess, if you check out which movies I guess <laughs> that I review, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, that's not happening anymore. I was, like, I did Star Wars, I did Bad Boys. Actually, no, you won't be able to figure it out, because Star Wars is like Disney. I guess they get distribution through everybody, because it's not Disney. But um, I got to go see... No, wait. I'll just say I didn't. I just won't even out myself like that. <laughs> but the point is, I want to be able to go do that again, because it's fun. Nope, I used to write... I used to write movie reviews for a website... And then this guy on his company Twitter account, which he bought all the followers for, uh, I forget what it's called. I won't even bother. Doesn't um, matter. He starts arguing with me about Trump on it. This is like 2015 or 2016. On his like, it's not his name. It's just the name of the company. It's like blah, 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 dot com on their t company Twitter, just calling Trump like terrible and anyone who likes him terrible. And I'm just like, can't you admit that you just don't like Trump? And he responds with, can't you admit that you just hate Muslims? <laughs> I was like, Bro. Like, not, only, not only is this on your business thing, you're just going to accuse me of that because it was, it was about the Muslim ban. It, that's when it was, when somebody asked him, Trump, about that passingly. And he was like, oh, we'll do something. We've got to stop. Whatever it is, we've got to stop it. But um, <laughs> It was about that, and like you're just going to accuse me of this because I don't agree that that it's an actual ban on Muslims, which the evidence shows it not to be. And then he just freaks out, and that's when we stop working together. But you can't bring up evidence, right? Evidence and facts and logic don't work on the left. We know that. Just so right? happens to be the countries with most terrorists that Obama's administration pointed out, and leaves off the countries with the most Muslims in the world, but it's a Muslim ban, yes. But you can't, I mean, you can't bring them any facts and any logic, right? These are the same people that are now saying, you can't even eat food, indoors or outdoors. You can't even eat food because it's not safe. You can't breathe fresh air. When you are afraid of a virus, obviously you need to close the places that, that keep you alive, right? I mean, you've been breathing for every waking moment, not even waking moment, every... You're breathing even when you're asleep, right? And now they're telling you that that's not safe. But when they think that the fake news media is the decider of the presidency, they immediately hit the streets to party and share champagne. <laughs> but, because there is no logic. 
the funny thing about that is this guy actually went to my elementary school. He was like four years older than me, I want to say. And I knew who he was. And he gave me like, I don't think he took his website that seriously. Like it never really grew, but it got you. It had enough followers on it, whether it was fake or not, that it got us into like the comic cons to get to movie screenings and everything. Because I guess from the movie studio's point of view, it's just like as many people as we can have talking about it, the better, right? So I imagine that the, and the funny thing is I checked back like a couple years later. That's why I noticed that it wasn't growing at all. And he was having a meltdown about Kanye. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, it sucks so bad when, when someone you look up to for so long completely changes and f- for the worse and like supports a racist. And it's like, maybe the reason, like maybe it's because he, he's not, I don't know. I don't if think I, the Kanye's changed at all. I, I mean, I mean, a li- like a little bit, but like if if we're talking about the same guy, because as you know, and anybody who knows me, I'm a big Kanye West fan, right? And he's never he's never bent the knee to the mob. I mean, in 2003, and they told him, "Bro, you look gay wearing a pink shirt." He said, "Whatever, I'm doing it anyway." He said, "Kanye, you can't rap." Go back into the dungeon and make beats. He said, no, I want to rap. They said, the Kanye, you, to yeah. Dude, this man, this man, sorry, I'm going to get on the Kanye hype real quick. This man was the first non-athlete to have a signature, a signature shoe with Nike. And they didn't, didn't give him that. the complete creative control that he wanted. So he had two. I had, I waited in line for a week on the sidewalk to get those sneakers. And he created two two different models with Nike. And he said, yo, I need more creative control. Because if you notice, the soles of, this, of the Nikes were already, were already the base for other Nike shoes. And he says, no, I want to build it from scratch. They said, no, what did he do? He went to Adidas and, and made a billion dollar empire. He's not going to stop. So to it, all the Kanye haters out there, pull up. We could, we could have that conversation. I've been could fighting you imagine about if you went up to like just some person who's not into politics at all, and you were just like, you know what? I like Jay Z, but I can't listen to him anymore because he supports the Democrats. Like you, that person would think you're an idiot. Like who cares? Like he's not swaying. And if if Kanye is making you vote for Trump, then your like resolve in terms of politics is probably not very strong. Like yeah. if it's, if if Kanye is the one who's swaying your opinion, if you're a hardcore Kanye fan, you vote for Kanye. Go ahead. But like <laughs> if you're like not sure about Trump and you think he's racist, but then Kanye says that he's not, and then you should vote for him. You probably weren't that informed anyways. I'm sorry. to tell you. And it's crazy how, um, I mean, just to your point about Jay-Z, I mean, you will recall that Jay-Z and Beyonce literally, like quite literally went on stage, did a song and dance, a song and dance for Hillary Clinton. And everybody clapped like seals. Kanye wears a red hat and goes to the Oval Office and they say he's a racist. Jay Z had a concert for Hillary and nobody showed up and it was free. It was free. And so, it like a, less than a month before the election and nobody cared. And that's and hilarious. Nobody had, but nobody had a problem with it. They didn't say, oh, no. Jay Z's a shill or, or any of that stuff. So it, it's absolutely insane. And it's the, it's the media. They got their, their hooks into people and they've completely been successful, or not completely, but been quite successful so far at brainwashing people. Unfortunately for them, though, I think they did push it a little bit too far. And now it's all starting to come back at them, right? Like, I mean, you can only push people so far until you end up with people like, uh, you know, Bryson Gray and Forgiato and and all these guys that are, I mean, and Kanye, who are finally like, no, dude, <laughs> enough. How much of these not- guys have you listened to? I mean, oh, like- Forgiato is a nice guy. I spoke to him in DM one time. Um, Bryson Gray is pretty good. Um, Patriot J, I listened to. I thought that was pretty good. Oh, I don't know him. Um, and then there's like they actually rap about politics, but like I just don't want it to be cringe. What about some... um, that guy, uh, Tom? Is it Tom McDonald? Tom was... McDonald, right? And I forgot he was, I didn't even realize he was Canadian, but like a name oh, is Tom McDonald. Of Tom McDonald, of course, he is. <laughs> He's good too. Like his songs are hit and miss, I think, but like he knows how to write a song clearly. And then there's Anomaly. What's his uh what's his Twitter name called? Something Dream about Rare. magic. Dream oh, rare. Yeah I, yeah. I like him and I agree with him so much, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> I'm I mean, sorry. I'll be, honest, like, 
I can't sit here and say I don't know. I don't know if he has like an album or anything. I haven't really like listened to it, but I will He's, say that he he makes um he makes some pretty good points on his YouTube and uh, he seems to do some some. I mean, it's not even like super deep digging research. It's pretty like it's like just below the the CNN Fox News surface. It's like it's all right there. You just pull one layer off and you can see it. I would say that he does a great job of attracting conspiracy people and mainstream people. And he walks, he highlights both sides of the line pretty well because he's low key has tons of views. Yeah. And I, I think his biggest, I, I don't even, I'll be like, I don't know how Facebook works. Like I just getting my YouTube up and running. Um, my Instagram obviously has the most traction right now. Um, but I don't even know how Facebook works. And I think it might not even be worth it at this point. Um, you know, the censorship is going crazy. Candace is suing the fact checkers and the Hodge twins are getting kicked off. And, oh, and are they? yeah, or, you know, don't quote me. I think they were getting, they got suspended or something. And again, these are not to be the, uh, you know, play the, the uh, identity politics, but these are, these are black people that they're kicking off for their political views. And meanwhile, they're all chanting like uplift black voices. And of course, but not Candace and not Terrence K. Williams. And, um, and of course my, my uh, good friend Maggie, who I can prove, okay. I can't prove I'm not a, I'm not a freaking computer programmer, but you know, we have a, a correspondence and I, I went like a week, more than a week one time. And her stories didn't pop up in my Instagram feed. Yeah, that happened. Like, that what? happened to me with her as well. She like just doesn't show up. <laughs> Some so, people. Um, that same thing happened with like with Kingface. Rest in peace. His stuff just stopped yeah. showing up. Candace Owens just doesn't show up for me. Her stories do, but her posts don't. It just happens. Just I guess one day they put the thing on. And it's crazy, though, because I do follow on my Instagram. I do follow hard left accounts. I mean, from uh, BLM DC and Solidarity for All and, and these um, refused fascism groups. And um, one called a, a liberal dad or being liberal or all these all these hard left accounts that do not post as much. But when they do, they're up front and center. Oh, so you could look at their timeline. You could look at their grid. and It'll be like, oh. September, August, like once or twice a month, but then they'll go on like a three post little stream and they will, I will see those like, look how bad Donald Trump is like, dude, chill. I often wonder what life would be like if like you were just allowed to grow properly on social media. I experienced it with my YouTube channel. Like I experienced the good life and then they took it all away. It was like, it was fun. You're growing and you're getting like, if you do, do a good video you know like i should expect a good amount of views for this and then they just slowly they slowly whittled it away and then once they demonetized me they just cut it completely it's, it was it, a sad time in life you know <laughs> I, you know well hopefully we can remain monetized i don't know if i i might have said some some highly disputed claims that all well now the that. idea isn't to demonetize people it's just to keep them monetized but you just don't get any commercials that's all like you don't get it, you don't get the exposure, so you don't get as many commercials or the click rate so low. I don't and know. Really quick, just really quick. I guess we may maybe want to end on this because I, I haven't sure. researched it too much. But um, the f- Earth is flat. <laughs> you no, know, the, uh, these these um, these Democratic. Um, I don't know if they're uh, was it uh, Amy Klobuchar and Maisie Hirono who oh, have sent good letters. Ones. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah, Amy Klobuchar and Maisie Hirono, who have sent letters directly to Susan Wojcicki. Yep, I uh, read that. Asking for more censorship, which is just, I mean, like well, imagine that. Being like, like, well, there's some people who don't believe what we're saying, so we got to get rid of them. So maybe we can yeah, do that a little bit more next time and, and really see what these crazy people are talking about. Yeah, let's try to come up with some ex- some good examples next time of... I'll write it down on my sticky notes, which is, <laughs> which is right under the dimensions for the screen in the editing. Um, social media censorship. Let's come up with some good examples. If you can get some good examples from 
is her full name Margaret? Is it Maggie? Uh, yeah, yeah, Maggie. Yep, Maggie. Margaret Van. She's something Dutch, right? I'd imagine. Uh, Vandenberg. Um, Vandenberg. And then, of course, yeah. Kay Williams also. He used to come up with these uh, funny little, you know, like the sh- like the I- the IGTV videos, but they were still short. They were like two minutes, and they were like effort. Okay, uh, no shade to Terrence. It's hilarious. But obviously, you sort of get the formula, and they're not quite as funny. But those first couple <laughs> ones were, yeah, again, no shade, all respect. Like, the man's putting in work. Like, he wrote a book and everything. Like, shout out. I might actually cop that book. But, um, you know, they were funny. They were hilarious. They were popping up in my feed. And then it's not until I go into the search bar and I'll type one letter, uh, you know, I might be looking to, to look at some Yeezys or some sneakers or something, and I'll type in Y, and then I'll see, like, you know, the why from Fog City will pop up and I'll realize that Maggie's been posting stories for, for the last yeah. 20 hours and I haven't seen any of them. And David Harris Jr., who has, I think, millions of fans on Facebook and um, I, he, won't, he won't pop up in my Instagram. Maybe he's off it. Maybe he's focusing solely on Facebook or solely on um, YouTube or something and he's not posting to Instagram, but... I just, I don't really see it. I mean, you know, he's a pretty big presence. I was actually, actually met him at, at walk away. Um, super nice guy. Um, one of my coworkers back in Brooklyn used to love David Harris Jr. Um, so that, that was a fun time. And really last thing this time, back to DC on the 12th, back to okay. Washington D. on December 12th. And we for? were definitely uh, for the finale of the stop to steal rallies. Mm. So there's like a little right. bus tour, uh, right side broadcasting, and some other people are, are covering it, and they're zigzagging from Florida through Georgia, and you know, wiggling around the country, and then it, it's going to be back at the Capitol on December 12th, rain or shine, I will be there, um, and we will have to talk about that. Right side broadcast, and they're doing something right. They're they've exploded. They're the only. Uh, we were looking for a feed for the Arizona hearing today. The government of Arizona doesn't even have it. Right side broadcasting has it, and they got the ladies. They do have ladies. ladies. <laughs> they were super. M and M like two thousand three. They got me. Um, they got me a lot of uh, IG followers and YouTube subs because I I was just there at the Walter Reed, and they asked me for a little interview, and nice. I just railed on Cuomo. Uh, and and the, dis- the decay of New York. And that was all the way back in October for the walkaway march. And then I went back, obviously, for the stop the steal. And then we got one more stop the steal. And hopefully Trump can still pull this off. It's not really looking good. But I do have faith that people are finally starting to come around to um, the idea that uh, all you have to do, all you have to do is tell a liberal, or I shouldn't even say liberal, because I like liberals. It's the left. It's the hard left. All you have to do is say, do you really believe that Joe Biden got more votes than Barack Obama. And then you watch the little 404 error message uh, does not compute come across their head. And they're like, oh, wait, actually. And then you're like, by a lot. Exactly. So we shall see. We shall see. All right. Until next time, boys and boy girls. (laughs) Later.